Hello again! So today I'm going to take you through the basics of audio recording and basic warping in Ableton. So the first thing I really want to show you is the I.O. section. It's kind of boring but mildly essential. Um, so first of all, your track should look like this if you've got the I.O. displayed. If not, it could be due to this little button down here in the right hand corner. That's your little I.O. button. So you can toggle it on and off, make your tracks look neater or have that information there. So what I'm using right now um, to, fi to find out what you're running for your audio in and audio out, you go into Ableton Live's preferences, then you go into audio, which is what I'm in. Um, so my audio input device is built-in microphone and I'm just using my laptop speakers at the moment. It's not the best way to be running things, but um, it's all I've got right now for my limited setup. So, because of this, I can't monitor audio while I record it um, because that will play back out of my laptop speakers and it will start a feedback loop. So, just to keep in mind, if you are using your own laptop speakers as your audio output, make sure your monitor is off when recording and using audio. Um, okay, so now we're going to get to the fun bit where we actually get to record some audio. Yay! Alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your track is record enabled. Um, seems pretty simple, but it's often easy to forget. Um, also, if you're recording along with other clips, make sure that they're queued to play. So, when I hit record here, um, you, there's going to be a one bar metronome counting as I've set up here, and then it will start recording. So, just going to do that now. Okay, so I don't really have many amazing musical capabilities right now, so I'm just trying to use basic clicking. So I hope that works. It does look like it clipped a little bit during recording, but um, I'll check that out and see how we go. Okay, so now that we've recorded our audio, I'm going to show you how to warp and quantize it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you want to place warp markers. This can be done by double clicking along the time code menu up here. Um, that, I, that one I don't quite want there. I'm going to move him to the start of the clip just because I've found that when editing this one it works better that way. So I'm just going to... So well, what the area that's between these two warp markers is what's going to be affected. And there's two different ways you can work with those. So one is you can place a warp marker and drag. This will drag the audio around which is great for creating strange effects. The other is to right click and then you can choose quantize. Now quantize is similar to beat detective. Um, it will move everything to a set grid value. Um, there are, you can change the level of how much you want it to quantize to. Right now I have it up to 100% but you can change that and you can also change the grid value that it changes to. So let's have a listen to that. That sounds pretty much in time. Um, my warping doesn't work quite as well as I'd like it to um, because of the fact that I was using my laptop speakers so I have a lot of hi-hat from the drum track so I haven't been able to do as much editing with it as I would have liked to but this is just a basic way to make it work. And now I'm just going to cut that down to two bars just, just to have it shorter. And then I'm going to crop the sample by right clicking and then selecting crop sample. And that will just crop out everything else that you don't want and just keep it down to that short little clip section. So, okay, so before we covered the absolute, absolute basics of how to warp audio in Ableton, um, I don't really know much more than that, but I, there's a couple of little things else I want to show you. So say you wanted to, instead of quantizing your entire selection to a grid, um, you, there's another thing you can do which just moves a single transient, transient. So if you just wanted to focus on one note that was out of time or whatever, this is the perfect way to do it. So what you do is you select the area you want and hold down command and, sorry, go press the right spot, and that will put automatically put in 
um, warp markers temporarily, which just allows you to move that one section, which is really helpful um, for just moving small amounts of area. Okay, so the next thing you can do with audio warping is you can change the time of your clip. So what I've done now is I've just gone back to the cropped version of my audio, which is just the two clips, and I'm going to show you the different ways that you can warp in that sense. Um, there are different types of warping, um, only one of them changes the pitch of your audio, which is really quite helpful um, for changing things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this out. That's not working, I have to extend it to the bar, so I'm going to change it to 2. And now I'm going to drag out and just remove these warp markers. So I'm just working with the two along the edge. And now I'm going to stretch this out. So this should make it go a bit slower. So that's extended the time of it. And now I'm going to halve the time of it. So it's pretty simple in that regard. That's kind of cool. Nice and fast. No loop sides. So yeah, that's how you can use audio um, warping to change the length of your sound. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is what happens if you turn re-pitch on. So this means when you extend or shorten it, the pitch will change just accordingly. So the inbuilt thing with most of the warping types is that it sort of compensates for the fact that you've changed the length of the sound. So normally when you stretch an audio file, the pitch will drop, or if you stretch it inwards, the pitch will raise. Um, the other warping types have accounted for that and removed that, but when you use re-pitch, when I extend this out, the pitch will also change. That actually sounds really cool. I didn't expect it to sound like that. And same thing for if I drag that inwards. So yeah, that's just some of the basic ways you can use um, audio warping for creative purposes.